For thousands of years, billions of humans have built their lives around the cherished idea that a creator was out there looking down on them, caring for them. A God who is both creator and protector. Dr. Persinger's God Helmet forces us to consider a radical reimagining of human experience. God may not have created us. He may not be protecting us. God may simply be in our minds. Okay, so we're going to put on the uh, helmet. Our approach was very simple. If you want to study the brain, then let's look at the brain in the laboratory with an experiment. Just follow the experience and let it come to you, all right? Okay. After putting Domenica into a sealed chamber with no light, the research team will monitor her brainwave activity for one hour. In a few minutes, Domenica's brainwaves start to order themselves into a relaxed pattern. Then Dr. Persinger activates a magnetic coil sitting over the right side of her brain. It's no more powerful than a hairdryer, but it's designed to focus its energy on a small set of brain cells in the right temporal lobe. Those cells, he believes, will stimulate in Dominica a sense that someone or something is present. We hypothesize that as the human being developed the ability to forecast their own self-dissolution, their own death, which is tremendously anxiety-generating, that another concept emerged which allowed that anxiety to be reduced. And whatever that concept was, it has certain parameters. It had to be infinite and forever and everywhere. Otherwise, it would have an end. If you have an end, then you have anxiety. So there had to be a concept inculcated within the brain itself that there is something out there that goes on forever. And if you somehow relate to it and can be a part of it, the idea of anxiety becomes a non-event. Dr. Persinger believes the efforts of our brain's right temporal lobe to relieve the anxiety of death is what we sense when we think we are sensing the divine. And he's designed his God helmet to produce that sense on demand. Dominica? Yeah. Okay, I'm about ready to come in. Just relax. For one hour, Domenica has been shut inside the chamber without light or sound, alone with her thoughts. And perhaps also with God. And it says you felt the presence of something. Yeah, there's like other things around me. Okay, can you describe them? No, they were just bodies of nothing. Not okay. doing anything, just... Just chilling. How, how many were just chilling? <laughs> um. She actually counted them. You see her move her hand? Yeah. She was actually recreating it. Yeah. More than 80% of Dr. Persinger's subjects, whether they are religious believers or not, sense a presence from the God helmet. When the right hemisphere is being stimulated, she felt the presence of things around her. Five entities that were faceless. I couldn't see, like, down my body was, like, up more, okay. so I could only see, like, above. Oh, above. Above. Yeah. Okay. okay. She had these marked in intense feelings of visual sensations in the, always the upper visual field. Did you notice that? That's typical of, of the temporal lobe being activated. I see you checked here that the experiences did not come from my own mind. Can you describe that? I was like, watching myself. So it wasn't me feeling like I was watching myself lying on the road. I didn't feel like my head was attached to me. You felt like what? It, my head wasn't attached. Okay, so you felt like your head was detached and somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. Now, it also it says you saw vivid images this time. Yeah, there's like heat coming up, like I keep like fire. Okay. Coming up around. Which one did you like the best, the first or the second? First one. You like the first one? Okay. The one I want to float again. It was cool. <laughs> okay, well. Not too much like in the fire part, the second one, but. I don't know. First one was awesome. And she had a classic experience. 
that takes place in the chamber. Now imagine what that would be if she was sitting in a church pew or a synagogue or a mosque or for that matter laying by herself at night in the middle of her bed and this happened. Can you imagine how she would label it and the impact it would have on her entire life? In the history of religious experience, many of the great religious thinkers have, have electrical lobility in the temporal lobe. Luther, as you know, who started Lutheranism, was struck by lightning. These are brief events that have powerful impact on people during those critical times of their life. And really the great challenge to science, and this is the exciting part, is not so much the fact that the brain's generating the experiences, is what are the stimuli? You've seen a few examples of the crude stimuli when we apply magnetic fields, but what about natural stimuli? What about stimuli that are manufactured or manipulated by societies? What about intrinsic chemical changes? And what about all those stimuli we don't know yet that can produce the most powerful experience in the history of humankind, the God experience?